nearly all patients with multiple myeloma will become, let's call it quad refractory, to the treatments that are available, and then when anti-CD38 monoclonal antibodies for immunotherapy fail, there's really just nowhere to go. So we're here to discuss Seldonexor and it's a low and low dose dexamethasone in just such refractory patients with multiple myeloma and it's the STORM study. So to do this, I'm with Dr. Dan Vogel who is director of the Abramson Cancer Center Clinical Research Unit and an assistant professor of medicine at the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Tell us first off about Seldonexor. So Selenexor is an inhibitor of nuclear export. It blocks a protein called XPO1 or exportin-1, which carries other, mostly proteins, out of the nucleus or the command center of the cell, which means that when blocked by Selenexor, XPO1 can no longer carry those out of the nucleus of the cell. And what remains trapped in the cell then are proteins known as tumor suppressor proteins mm -hmm. that actually shut down the growth and survival of cells, and particularly of cancer cells, as well as for XPO1, the glucocorticoid receptor, the receptor that uh, binds to corticosteroids like dexamethasone and prednisone that we use to treat myeloma. And those combined effects allow Selenexor to actually kill cancer cells by blocking the export of the proteins that then keep them alive. So tell us about the STORM study and the, and the regimen that you evaluated in this phase two study. So this was a phase two study combining Selenexor with low-dose dexamethasone, which we commonly use to treat patients with multiple myeloma. Um, we decided to look at patients who really didn't have any available treatment options, who had been through all four of the currently available highly effective drugs plus the newly available monoclonal CD38, anti-CD38 antibodies like daratumumab or the investigational isatuximab. I mean, what she said in the abstract is like, they're kind of, what was the phrase you used? They're not just refractory, but pedifractory. So, so this is actually the most refractory population of patients that have ever been investigated in a clinical Jeez. trial. We had to come up with new names for them. So for patients who are refractory to lenalidomide, pomalidomide, bortezomib, and carfilzomib, we called them quad refractory. Right. And when you added in one of the anti-CD38 antibodies, we called them now penta refractory. I mean, both groups had a median of seven, seven prior treatment regimens. I mean, that is the definition of really heavily pretreated patients. They were definitely heavily pretreated. And actually, the median time from their diagnosis to when they went on study was only about four years, which meant that they had really gone through all of the available therapies very quickly in a short period of time. So what did you find? So what we found was that about 21% of patients responded, had a partial response or better to the combination of Selenexor and dexamethasone. And those responses in this very heavily pretreated and refractory population were of reasonable duration with a median of about five months. Wow. So what toxicities did you see and how were they handled? So we did, certainly saw some toxicities from this treatment combination, uh, mostly nausea, anorexia or decreased appetite, fatigue thrombocytopenia, and anemia. They were mostly of low grade, although there definitely were some grade three gastrointestinal toxicities as well as grade three fatigue, which is reasonably severe. We also saw some moderately severe hematologic toxicity with low platelet counts and very low hemoglobin levels, um, and occasional patients with low sodium levels in their blood as well. So what's next? I mean, is, are you encouraged enough at this point to move forward? Well, there are a couple of things. Those toxicities, we figured out how to manage them reasonably well. Oh, nice. So we gave patients a lot of supportive care, really figured out how to allow them to stay on study. And we also modified the treatment protocol over the course of the study so that while we were originally starting off giving people just six doses a month, by the end of the study we planned to give them eight doses of Selenexor and Dexamethasone per month, which then also allowed physicians to build in treatment interruptions for side effects. And with this new plan, <clears throat> we're going to enroll another 122 patients in the Penta Refractory group using the eight doses per month and all of the supportive care that we figured out how to give and really confirm that these encouraging preliminary results hold, hold up when we treat more patients. So in a group of patients who have exhausted all currently available treatment options and have an extremely poor prognosis, this approach is promising. 
Yes, I really think that this has the potential to be a new treatment option for patients with myeloma who really don't have any other place to go. That's got to be exciting. It's very you exciting to be part of like a that. study like this. One of my patients who is on this study came onto the study with very refractory disease, really no other treatment options, rapidly getting worse. and now 10 months into treatment, continues to come in every month to see me taking the medication with a good quality of life. It really, for some patients, will represent a life-saving opportunity. Oh, geez, that really is interesting. Thank you for your time. I appreciate that. And at ASH 2016 here in San Diego, we've got all kinds of stories for you, both online and in print. Please check ASH Clinical News. I'm Rick McGuire.